technology take place which bring down the cost, it's a different matter. If the current technology remains, it won't happen. In addition to which we feel that to really bring down the carbon footprint in India, you need to adopt all the existing technologies, including hybrid and CNG and ethanol and biogas, because our electricity is still largely coal. coal. And it doesn't actually bring down the overall carbon footprint, mm. as it would say in Norway or someplace where it's all hydroelectric. Mm. Well, yes, and we are starting to see adoption picking up, but as you point out, it is largely restricted to metros and, of course, uh, more in the two-wheeler space at this point in time. But, you know, speaking about the future and given the experience of the past with uh, the Maruti Suzuki joint venture, now you've got Toyota as a, as a collaborator as well and as part of this sort of tripartite agreement, so to speak, now. Uh, how has that changed things and what, what are the lessons that you take from the last 40 years into this new relationship? I think uh, Toyota coming into this has very major significance for us. One, it gives us access to a number of new technologies. For example, this hybrid technology, which is now coming in with the Grand Vitara, is not a technology which is available anywhere else. But we will be introducing this technology, and it brings down fuel consumption by 35 40%. Toyota also has access to the bigger, more... Uh, branded kind of yeah. uh, car technology so we can get those cars um, manufactured for the upper segment. So the, the Lexus and, yeah. Up to the Lexus quality if necessary. But uh, in between also the Camrys mm. and the Prius for the hybrids and mm. those cars are also available. So we will have Suzuki giving us for the Bharat market and from to Toyota, we'll get the technologies for the upper market. So that will give us the ability to cater to the full range of the market. And we will be able to find whatever we need to explore. Because Toyota is looking for India to do some kind of uh, production for their export markets mm -hmm. also. Yeah, on the smaller end of the market. Okay. So what is this going to mean, Mr. Bhargav, then in terms of future investments, in terms of future expansion as well? You're going to be heading to Gujarat later this week. Uh, uh, so what, what can we expect? So as as uh, you, everybody knows by now, we have got the next site at Karkoda. Yeah. And uh, if all goes as planned, it will become one of the largest single manufacturing sites anywhere in the world. Of one million cars are not manufactured in many places at one site. And I don't think Harkota is going to be enough, of course. I think in another three, four, five years, you'll find we need to go somewhere else also. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, at this point in time, at least for the next five years, you believe that this capacity addition should cater to the needs one and the demand? One million in I think, will be useful. Along, uh, well... I guess that's that. Be, so I don't think it'll grow faster than that at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just take me through from setting up uh, your first plant uh, here in in Gurgaon to to now, of course, uh, pouring uh, into Gujarat and and other parts. Uh, what have been the big learnings there in terms of creating that ecosystem of building communities around around the plants? Because that I know you're a big believer in the fact that you need to get uh, the community involvement. We have seen that in Gurgaon, when we work with all the people around us, the villages, and treat them as part of our extended family, it greatly helps our operations. In Gujarat, we are doing the same kind of thing. And we built this large hospital there and a school there in that area. And that is open to all the people in that area. And I think uh, a big industry like a car industry should not remain just confined to making cars. I think it has a role in developing the whole area. After all, I think part of the Gurgaon growth and its prosperity owes itself to Maruti. Mm. And I think the same thing is going to happen in that Mahasana area in Gujarat and in this Kharkoda area in Haryana. I think we will spread out and have other things coming up and then people find the whole ecosystem changing. 
and it leads to growth all over. Mm. Uh, given, given, you know, what you just spoke of, do you then believe that policy decisions like reservation uh, and mandatory jobs for locals, uh, are those counterproductive? Because anyway, that would be the catchment area it's, for you, wouldn't it? It's not going to apply to us because the level is high enough. Yeah. And some of these things are required in our political system. And we have to find a way where we can talk to the governments in power and see that their needs are met also. Mm. And uh, we can work within whatever we decide. And that's what's happening. I think governments that way are very cooperative. Mm. They understand what we need, they understand what they need, and then we come to find a common mutual ground. You know, as I pointed out, I think the Maruti story is undeniably the story of Make in India, uh, at least for a large part of uh, the last four decades. As you look ahead, and now you've got the focus on Atmanirbhar, you've got the focus on PLI schemes, etc. How have you seen, uh, through the prism of what you experienced with Maruti over the last four decades and what you're seeing today, do you feel a little more confident about the Indian manufacturing story now? I think things are changing and changing for the better very fast. I think what has happened in the last seven, eight years in the ease of manufacturing has gone a long way. I don't think we have yet completed the process. One of the areas where I now have a strong desire for change is in the way the civil services mm are trained and equipped to deal with specialized sectors like manufacturing or health or things like that. And I think there's a reform needed in the civil services that this business of everybody in the IAS can do every job, mm. I think that needs to change. I think there needs to be a very specialized group of people who deal with sophisticated areas like manufacturing and policy for manufacturing and competitiveness, who understand what this is all about and who don't come with no background and no understanding. I think that needs to change. That will be a major step forward in making us competitive. At the same time, I think our entrepreneurs, all our big industrialists and young industrialists, need to understand the Indian environment and see from the Maruti experience what really works well in India. Mm. So if I were to ask you to crystallize that into three things, what really works in India? I think we have to carry all workers with us and make them partners in what we do. In fact, the whole story of Maruti, in one sense, is a story of a partnership and trust and partnership. I think we need to change the environment in the whole industrial area to trust and partnership. I think we need to understand that uh, it's not an industry alone which can become competitive. I think it's the whole ecosystem of industries, and I mean everybody starting from raw materials to logistics to transport, who all have to get into the system and who all have to try and help the other to become more competitive. It's a national competitiveness thing we need to do. That's the second thing which we need to do. And if we do these things, and concentrate on the supply chain which becomes part of this. I don't think there's any stopping this country. Well, let's hope that there are no speed breakers uh, along, along the way. But Mr. Bhargav, let me end then by asking you, what is your favorite moment uh, of, of having been at the helm for so long, sir? You know, what is your, your sort of favorite memory that, that, you, uh, that you cherish? I, I'm not sure if there's one moment which I cherish. But, uh, you know, new things came happening and you get excited about something new which is happening. And in the past, there was a launch of a car which became so successful or seeing your cars in large numbers in some hill station when you went, you saw all, every third car was, I mean, every second or two out of three were Maruti cars. That used to be very exciting as to count the cars as to what is Maruti, what is others. You Today, still do that? I did do that. But even today? Not today, no. Now it's... Uh, now it's going to be much harder. Now there are other things happening. And even today when you see some of the new things which are happening and the new technologies, I think all of those create, uh, still create excitement. Mm. Do you have a favorite of the many models that have been launched? 
all the new models which come. Like, for example, I'm now looking forward to the uh, Grand Vitara. I intend to get one as soon as I can. <laughs> I think there's a long, there's a long list. Are no, you, people I, who, want, I know. who want the Grand Vitara. I have a but... slight advantage, Shiri. <laughs> I, I would imagine, sir. I would imagine. But thank you so much thank once you. again. We wish you the very best of luck and appreciate you joining us here uh, in our studio for On the Record. Thanks very much for your Thanks time. So. Thank you very much. Well, that is the chairman of Maruti Suzuki on the 40 years gone by and more importantly, what the road ahead looks like. We will take a break here on On the Record, but there's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a minute with sports. Thank you.